So, Spirit Science. One of my subscribers informed me that on March the 16th, 2015, you posted this offering on your website. Milky Way is three times larger than we thought, and it's a Taurus. Well, we've only just hit the title, and you've already lied more than once. We'll come back to why this is bollocks shortly, but since you begin your main text with utter irrelevance, let's follow the detour imposed by your tenuous grasp on reality and see how you begin to justify your dishonest headline. You begin by referring to some pictures, which immediately gives us an indication of your mental age and just how superficial your thought processes are. Apparently, these images were based on so-called research by your apparent favourite, Swiss crank Nassim Haramein. For some reason, you appear to think that the length of time someone has been talking crap is relevant, and somehow takes away the stench of their failure, before you immediately jump for the stalwart of name-dropping Einstein, as if some of his credibility would rub off on you. We've been talking about this since 2011, when Spirit Science started. Amazing. You've been talking about an internet movie that came out in 2011 since 2011. I'm not quite sure why you think this represents some kind of achievement or relevant fact, so I'll just repeat the simple point that the length of time someone has been talking shit does nothing to transform it into Shinola, before we listen to some more of your name-dropping parasitism. Bless, I'd reckon even Pythagoras wrote about it somewhere. And why would you reckon that, unless you're so hopelessly deluded as to think this made-up toroidal twaddle is supposedly so obvious that even people in ancient times would have known about it? Or perhaps you're so delusional that you actually think your ignorant pontifications on reality are equivalent to intelligent thought? Unfortunately, you have yet to demonstrate any of your claims scientifically, which is ironic given your own statement that Unless we can actually demonstrate that scientifically, we're pretty much just throwing darts in the dark here. If anyone is already beginning to retch at the stench of bullshit coming from your web article, I'm sure they'll be disappointed to know that you're only just getting started, and are about to kick your random falsehood generator into full swing. And so now, not a few days ago, there was a surge of revelation that swept through the scientific communities of the world. There wasn't. You were lying again. Rather than back up this claim, you then revert to one of the few tricks you have up your pathetic sleeve by engaging in repetition of your headline in the futile hope that nobody will notice just what a perfidious little git you are. The galaxy is three times bigger than we thought, and it is in fact a Taurus. Since the gullible simpletons that pass for your audience love to claim that you never state anything as fact, isn't it interesting that here you are again making an unsubstantiated claim of fact? In my last video on your cartoon shit streams, we saw another example of you claiming something as fact that was, Kel Supreze, an abject lie. Establishing that required nothing more than the ability to read, which says quite a lot about the amount of effort you are prepared to put into things. Is the galaxy three times bigger? Let's follow your link to an article on science, space and robots and find out. It says, and I quote, this extends the known width of the Milky Way from 100,000 light-years across to 150,000 light-years. Perhaps you think that 100,000 times 3 is 150,000. Whilst your stupidity is seemingly limitless, it is apparently nowhere near as limitless as your ability to openly lie about what your source material actually states. And why is it that in the linked article we also find zero substantiation for your claimed fact that the galaxy is a Taurus? Is it because you're full of more shit than a backed-up sewer? By watching the included video of one of the paper's authors discussing their findings, we once again find no substantiation for the unmitigated horseshit that you're shoveling as if the future of Rose Gardens depended on it. Unperturbed by the chasm between reality and your own mental diarrhoea, you continued. Before this, the general idea and explanation of this was that the galaxy emanated out in a flat plane, a flat disk, and it turns out that this is not so. Almost. Whilst Professor Newberg did say in a statement for the media that we found that the disk of the Milky Way isn't just a disk of stars in a flat plane, given your previous labouring of the word flat to mean two-dimensional, it's not really fair to Professor Newberg to think that what she means in a press statement by flat matches your simplistic view. Moving on. People may be initially impressed to see you quoting from the original paper, 
Before anyone gets too excited by this illusion of integrity, it seems only prudent to point out that once again it's got nothing to do with your claims that the galaxy is supposedly three times bigger or that it's a torus. Had the authors arrived at such noteworthy conclusions, one can be sure that they would have mentioned it in the abstract that you quote from, or the video of one of them speaking about their paper. And yet they don't. Why do you think that is? Are we supposed to believe that they didn't think such findings were worth mentioning at all? Or is it more likely that this is just another example of you talking out of your ass at the expense of other people's hard work? For anyone who may be wondering why you would quote something irrelevant, let me proffer an explanation. It's pretty obvious that you didn't understand what it says, or what it means, and that you simply don't care. You're just trying to create a facade that you're reading and presenting science, and know full well that, just like you, your audience don't have a damned clue what it's on about, and won't bother to even check the basic claims you're making. This is huge. This means so much for everyone. Before you get on to attempting to justify this assertion, kindly give the rest of us a moment to make some popcorn and fetch an oven glove for facial impact protection. We'll be back in a few moments. So, spirit science, why is this huge and what does it mean for everyone? It demonstrates the connection between atoms, galaxies and the human body. You really are a lying sack of shit. Not only does the linked web article make no such claims, neither does the abstract of the paper, and had you bothered to read the entire paper, you would have found not one scrap of support for your fictitious twaddle. Unless we can actually demonstrate that scientifically, we're pretty much just throwing darts in the dark here. Unless we can actually demonstrate that scientifically, we're pretty much just throwing darts in the dark here. We must wonder then just what kind of egregiously dishonest individual thinks nothing of lying about the work of qualified scientists in order to create an air of support for his baseless horse shit. Remember this little attempt to curry sympathy when you realised that your ideas were subject to scrutiny. What it felt like was that all of a sudden I was in a coliseum with this other guy, prepared to take spirit science, and me along with it, to its grave. Boo hoo. Can you spot the enormous double standard? For the benefit of your obvious ethical retardation, allow me to elaborate. Educated individuals who have pointed out the innumerable falsehoods in your so-called work have not only presented things you find highly inconvenient, they're called facts, but have also accurately presented your content. You, on the other hand, think absolutely nothing of taking other people's hard work and openly lying about what it says and means. So, without further ado, let's move on to the next turd that slopped its way out of your mind's arse. It gives ample evidence to vortex mathematics in explaining and doing quantum field equations. More lies. Your link for doing quantum field equations is particularly hilarious. It's a link to your own cartoon horseshit for Spirit Science 24 a post and video in which you do nothing with quantum field equations and lie about the key points of black holes. Whilst myself and others are spotting a trend in your abject failure to do any maths whilst making claims about maths, a more pressing concern is why a filthy weasel like you claims that a paper that has nothing to do with either subject gives ample evidence to both of them. If anyone was hoping for an explanation from you, they're out of luck. Apparently, you don't think anybody needs to know why this paper gives ample evidence to Vortex Mathematics in explaining quantum field equations. In much the same way as you don't think it might be a good idea to gain an understanding of a subject before you start talking bollocks, as if you had some kind of insight on reality. And what does this have to do with the size of the Milky Way? Well, nothing, of course. You've already wandered off track faster than a squirrel on crack, but the seemingly limitless flow of equine excretia from your astral arsehole isn't finished yet. Apparently this paper on the structure of the Milky Way even helps us understand how the human body works more efficiently so that we might actually bring some health back to the world. Works more efficiently than what? If you're going to start a sentence, it's usually a good idea to finish it rather than sticking a non sequitur on the end of it and hoping for the best bring some health back to the world. This being the same world that, thanks to a scientific approach to medicine and the application of evidence-based medicine, allows people to enjoy greater longevity and standards of care than at any other time in human history. Such an absurdly ignorant proclamation on the subject of human health 
could only come from the kind of bastard who thinks that operating theatres should have more crystals in them. One might have thought that, had the authors of the paper made such a discovery about how the size of the Milky Way supposedly affects human health, they might have mentioned it themselves in their own paper. They didn't. The reason is that their work doesn't provide any such understanding whatsoever. Are you so maxed out on these spirit art, Kool-Aid and Unicorn shit that you think it likely that you somehow managed to identify not just one, but multiple conclusions that the authors of the paper apparently didn't think of, despite the fact that it was them that did all of the hard work whilst you just sat on your ass and looked at some pictures. It seems so, as your only attempt to back up this latest claim is another link to more of your own made-up nonsense. Anyone with a mental capacity above that of a lobotomized rodent should be able to see the fundamental problem of circular reasoning when a delusional buffoon declares his own nonsense to be justification of itself. Seemingly, that's a skill you have yet to acquire. All of this data could be extrapolated from looking at all the dots that connect this study to everything else. What data? What dots are these? Why don't you unequivocally demonstrate how this could be so using some of the mathematics you claim to be so fond of and that you claim your material contains when it does not, instead of just stating that unspecified connections exist? Well, we all know the answer to this. It's because you're utterly incapable of doing so. And no, it couldn't be extrapolated to everything else unless you're either systematically dishonest or utterly mentally defective. But there's this nagging problem I'm feeling. Is it the nagging feeling that lying about the hard work of educated, qualified individuals is wrong? Is it the nagging feeling of guilt due to knowing that what you're stating as fact doesn't even pass the most cursory comparisons to reality or the source material? No, of course not. That'd be asking for scruples. The nagging feeling isn't guilt at your own incessant dishonesty or even the temporary blockage of your mind's arse. No, it's more delusional twattishness. Nobody else is connecting these dots. When you make up the dots and pull them out of your backside with no more cognitive dexterity than a creationist, you've got to be a complete halfwit to be surprised that nobody else is connecting them too. And weren't you earlier stating that this paper caused a surge of revelation that swept through the scientific communities of the world? Yes, you were. So are you now suggesting that the world scientists somehow failed to spot and connect dots that an uneducated fuckwit managed by trying and failing to play snap with the pictures? Had that surge of revelation not been a mendacious fabrication on your part, it would utterly contradict this latest claim of yours, demonstrating not only your monumental delusion of your own capabilities, but your utter failure to retain some internal consistency. If we cut out all the padding from your article and leave just the material that you wrote, we see that this spectacular failure occurs within just three paragraphs. I don't see the news reports or the science journals relating the shapes of galaxies to human health. Which journals have you checked? None. But let me save you some time. There is no connection between the shapes of galaxies and human health. To any normal person, the fact that real scientists who know what they're talking about aren't talking about the drivel that simpletons like you come out with would be a clue that said simpletons are barking up the wrong tree. So imagine my surprise when, rather than take the hint from reality around you, you chose to disappear even further up your own arse. But just for the record, here's the data. No, that's just a link to the same web page describing the findings of the paper. A web article isn't data in the sense you're using it, and there is nothing on record that substantiates a claim that you just made up whilst lying about a scientific paper. All you're putting on record is the litany of your own breathtaking dishonesty and disdain for pesky details called facts. It's no longer in question, it's no longer pseudoscience. What manner of mental retardation are you afflicted with? When you take an article and demonstrate that you haven't even understood the basics of what it says, then your limited claims are not only in question, but so are the preposterous conclusions you draw from your misrepresentations of it. When you claim that the galaxy is a torus when it isn't, and that it's three times bigger than previously thought when it isn't, your claims are not only in question, but so is your ability to read and understand English and do maths to a level that even a child is capable of. 
Given your utter failure to substantiate even the headline of your article, it's pretty obvious that your thought process didn't get any more sophisticated than The waves on this picture look a bit like the waves on this picture. So everything Nassim Haramein says is true because look, the pictures look similar. A conclusion of such breathtaking fuckwittery that it's hard to believe that someone presenting it is old enough to use Play-Doh unsupervised, let alone grow facial hair. The implicit comparison of images is where you start this so-called article, and in the absence of any real content, it only gets more tenuous from there. Remember when we stripped out all the pictures and filler material that you added, and left just the scraps that you actually wrote? Good. Let's break out the highlighter of horseshit and see how much of it wasn't horseshit. That's a lie. That's a lie. Well, you almost managed three complete sentences at the beginning. Unfortunately, the rest of that is fallacious horseshit. That's irrelevant. That's pointless. That's a lie. 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 That's just irrelevant rambling, so is horseshit by default. That wasn't data, so that's a lie. And that's a particularly filthy lie. And that picture is irrelevant horseshit too. So a clear pattern emerges. The overwhelming majority of everything you wrote is horseshit. Half of the sentences you wrote were lies. And every statement you make about the content and meaning of the scientific paper was a lie. But making shit up is just so much easier than undergoing the inconvenience of having to understand what your source material states and having to actually think, isn't it? Wake up everyone, it's time to do something of grand import. The thing of grand import that you could do would be to find a scrap of integrity from somewhere and stop abusing the work of real scientists to pretend it lends credibility to your made-up childish nonsense. And the thing of grand import that the rest of us can do is call out miserable charlatans like you for what they are. Parasites. Parasites who are as quick to lie about the vast wealth of knowledge that intelligent people have painstakingly assembled over centuries as they are to run and play victim as soon as someone spots that they're spending more time spreading bullshit than they are doing the decent thing and checking the drivel they so proudly espouse as if it were either useful or meaningful. To ascertain just how meaningful the build you post on your various outlets is, we need only compare the breathtaking track record of achievements from following the scientific method to the detail-free, hand-waving inanity of make-believe pizzle from wootards and charlatans who, throughout history, have understood and contributed precisely bugger all. If you can't find it within yourself to go back to elementary school and start your education again, I'd invite you to try and resemble a decent human being by not lying about the work of people who actually have an education and do the hard work that you can't be bothered to.